Verona, on the river Adesia, has a history stretching back to Roman times, and in the centre of the city is the amphitheatre. Also simply known as the Arena, it's one of the biggest and best preserved amphitheatres from the time of the Roman Empire. It was built in the 1st century AD and held about 25,000 people who came here to watch gladiators often fight to the death. The reason that the arena is in such a good state of repair is that back in the 16th century, the people of Verona realized its importance and so decided to restore and preserve it. Today, a more peaceful use has been found for the arena, as it is used each year for opera performances during July and August. The audience sits on long marble bench-type seats, so a well-padded cushion is an essential extra, especially when a long production is anticipated. Almost everywhere you go in Verona, there is history to discover. Whether a church, a bit of Roman architecture, or one of the old gateways into the city. And guarding the Ponte di Castelvecchio is the old castle itself. Over the centuries, this medieval fortress has witnessed several invasions, and as a result, it's been altered and changed, including being modernized by Napoleon Bonaparte when he captured the city in 1805. In the Piazza della Erbe is the Tar Lamberti, which stands at 83 meters. Its construction began in 1172, and at the top of the tower are the old Rengo and Marangona bells from the 15th century, which still ring out over the city. The tower sits on the corner of the town hall and overlooks a thriving marketplace for all sorts of goods and produce. Almost as tall as the Lamberti Tower is the Campanile, or Bell Tower, of Verona's Cathedral. This was begun in the 16th century and has taken over 400 years to finally complete. The cathedral itself was begun in the year 1117 and replaced several earlier churches stretching back over 700 years. On the north bank of the river is the semicircular Roman theatre and the most important in northern Italy. It was built around the same time as the arena. Restoration began in the 19th century and today the theatre is used in the summer months for a season of Shakespeare plays, particularly Romeo and Juliet, who are said to have lived in the city. With so much history and culture packed into its ancient streets, it's no wonder that Verona has become such a popular place to visit. To the west, and we enter a landscape of vines and a fortified town of Suave, which has given its name to a dry white wine. The 14th century castle, surrounded by vineyards, overlooks the fortified town at the bottom of the hill. Close by is the town of Lenigo, with its ancient church and bell tower. It's overlooked by an important and beautiful villa, and one of many that we will see on this journey across the Veneto region of Italy. This is the Villa Rocca, built for the rich Pisani family in the early 16th century. It was designed by Vincenzo Scamozzi, a pupil of one of the world's greatest architects, Andrea Palladio, whose work we will see later on. It's hard to believe, looking at this building, that it was not designed in the 18th or 19th centuries. This recreation of classical ideas from designs of ancient Roman temples and then turned into houses was revolutionary. Even though the Villa Rocca was designed as a house, it was not actually intended as a place to live, but rather somewhere to visit in the summer for a meal with friends and then idle away a sunny afternoon. This elegant design has a portico recessed into the house, creating a simple square shape. 
a rare survival in the villa, is the oculus, a circular opening on the top, which lets the hot air out, so creating a cool draught drawn to the large glassless windows. This is an effective natural air conditioning device. When it rains at the Villa Rocca, the water falls down through a stone grill in the hall and is collected in a trough in the basement.